Today we'll have a good look at the inside of planet Earth, just as the man on the picture tries to do. Here you see the crust, where we live on, the mantle and the core of the Earth. Most of the interior of Earth consists of a mantle of molten rock called magma. As soon as it comes out of a volcano, magma is called lava, until it cools down into rock. The core consists of molten iron and nickel, and this core is very important as it creates the Earth's magnetic field, which protects us from dangerous space radiation. The outside of Earth is covered by a thin crust. In fact, the crust is so thin you could compare it to just the skin of an apple. The deeper inside, the higher the temperatures. At the core, temperatures reach 6000 degrees centigrade, just as hot as the surface of our sun. Here's a map of the world. Every dot represents a recent volcanic eruption or earthquake. Scientists started to see patterns in where earthquakes occur. They were able to discover the existence of tectonic plates covering the Earth. It turned out that earthquakes and volcanoes are happening all the time at the edges of each tectonic plate. There are about seven larger tectonic plates and many smaller ones. They are diverging, converging or moving in opposite directions. This might look violent, but they move not much faster than your fingernails grow. However, the movement of tectonic plates has major consequences at the surface. On places where plates converge, mountains and volcanoes are formed. Look how folded and folded these mountains are becoming, once two plates push into each other. The Himalaya mountains are formed this way. This picture shows it all. First, remember there are two types of tectonic plates. Oceanic plates are very dense and heavy, forming the ocean floor. They are thin, only a few kilometers thick, up to 10 kilometers. Continental plates are very thick, yet lighter. When a continental plate collides with an oceanic plate, the continental plate stays on top, while the oceanic plate dives underneath and melts back into the magma. This is called a subduction zone. Earthquakes and volcanoes are common here. And the Andes Mountains in Chile are created this way. At the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, plates actually move away from each other. Magma rises into the seawater and solidifies. This creates underwater mountains, called a mid-oceanic ridge. Let's have a look at some famous volcanoes. Here on Hawaii, the lava is quite runny, just flows down. You can't stop it. You can still come fairly close though. Another famous volcano is Stromboli, nicknamed Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. However, volcanoes can also explode violently. Even underwater an eruption can happen. Recently, a new island was created near Tonga in the Pacific. Iceland is another country where plenty of volcanic activity occurs, creating this blue lagoon. Iceland is making the most of the fact that magma is so close to the surface here. They use geothermal heat to create electricity. Not all volcanoes are at the edge of a plate. Hotspots, like Hawaii and Reunion Island, are somewhere in the middle of a plate. There just happens to be a hot magma plume burning a hole through the crust above it. At the same time, the crust itself is moving. Every time the crust has moved, the hotspot makes a new volcano, creating a chain of islands. Most of the volcanoes here are extinct, which means they cannot erupt anymore. At the hotspot itself, the volcano is active, or at least dormant, meaning it could still erupt. This island is usually the largest, whereas the oldest islands have been eroded away by millions of years of wind and water hitting it. Yellowstone in America must be one of the most impressive hotspots on Earth. This vast area is filled with boiling toxic pools. Volcanic activity definitely attracts tourists. Yet Yellowstone is classified as a supervolcano. If it ever erupted, as it has done in the past, it covers most of the United States with ash, 
causing a volcanic winter around the world. Also in the States is the San Andreas Fault. Here two plates move in opposite directions, creating friction and regular earthquakes. Some interesting things happen here to the straight rows of trees in your orchard and one half of this field decided to leave. And this farm became famous for its moving fences. And look what it does to roads and railways in California. To measure the strength of an earthquake, you use the Richter scale. It goes from 0 to 10, where every step is 10 times worse. The epicenter is the location on the surface where the effect of the earthquake is strongest. To create real destruction, you need 7 or more on the Richter scale. Of course, the location matters a lot. An earthquake in a city causes more damage than a stronger quake happening in the desert. In countries with regular earthquakes, new buildings tend to be adapted to more, be more resistant, for example with springs in the foundations and basement. And after an earthquake, a lot more damage can be done by aftershocks. People usually sleep in the street the first night after an earthquake, just to be safe. A particularly deadly effect is caused when an earthquake happens under water. A quake-triggered wave is called a tsunami, a word originating from Japan. In 2011 a tsunami hit Japan, causing death and destruction. Fukushima nuclear plant went into meltdown. In fact, the underwater quake was so powerful that all of Japan has moved two and a half meters eastwards. The Earth's axis itself even moved 10 centimeters. Sometimes water levels reach 21 meters high. This caused ships to be dumped miles inland. Seven years earlier, an even larger tsunami killed 230,000 people in Thailand and Aceh in Indonesia. So, have a look at the list above. Try to explain in your own words what all these words mean. If you can, you can be proud to know a thing or two about the Earth's crust.